Okay, I finally got a chance today to go to uh, the track and uh, put some laps on the MTC2. So I had uh, a couple goals in going to the track. One was to uh, test the new steering rack, which uh, passed with flying colors. Uh, worked great. Had a couple of uh, significant incidents, you would call them, I guess. And uh, no problems with the steering rack at all. No problems with anything on the car at all, actually. Either everything didn't break or lose anything after pounding in 439 laps today. So, so, uh, so that was test number one. Test number two was I wanted to uh, see what the effect of raising roll centers is. Never had a car where I could raise the roll centers as much as you can with this one. Uh, and it seems like a lot of the guys are running higher roll centers, so I thought, okay, let's jump on board and see what it's all about. So, <clears throat> so I figured what I would do is I would start with a known, stable, easy to drive uh, setup, which is this is the um, European carpet setup, and then I would just simply raise the uh, uh, lower arm with uh, three millimeter shims from one millimeter and see what happens. So that's the low center version, low center version. Here's the high version. And if we want to compare these, so you can see them side by side. Um, there's what you've got. So <laughs> there's the high roll center version and the low roll center version is in red. So you've got about three and a half millimeters uh, difference in the roll center height on the front and about four in the rear. Uh, ride stiffness, ride frequency, roll stiffness, all these numbers are the same because we didn't change anything to do with springs or any roll bars or um, uh, anything of that nature. Uh, the other main thing that changes is your sas chassis roll sensitivity. So this number is essentially a measure of uh, It'll pop up there if you want to read it, um, that uh, determines how responsive the chassis is. So the lower this number is, the more responsive the chassis is. The higher this number is, the, well, I don't want to say sluggish, the, the less responsive, the slower it is to respond, because it takes time for these things to occur. So the less the chassis has to roll, the faster that can happen. Um, so that's essentially what this number is means. Um, the other thing that changes is the camber game because we've changed the geometry between the upper and lower arms. Now I debated with whether I should try and match these out and I figured no I'm just going to keep them the same uh, or just going to leave camber game alone and it is whatever it is when I raise the uh, inner arm up. So what happened? Well here's the results. So this is the two best runs. Um, this is the high roll center version, low roll center version. Uh, the high roll center version um, was very responsive, very hard to drive, uh, for me at least. Uh, I had some serious traction rolling issues, which were some of the big crashes. Um, so it took me a little fiddling around before I could finally get the uh, get it where to a point where I could actually drive it. Um, and the low roll center version is just a well, it's just a dream to drive. It's so easy to drive, uh, and that's reflected in these numbers. So you can see here the fastest lap uh, was a little bit faster with the high roll center version. Uh, but the variance between the fastest lap and the top 30, and this is what I look at, uh, there's two tenths of a second between those. And in the low roll center version, it's less than a tenth. So this is an indication of, of how easy this one was to drive. It was very, very easy to drive. Um, the other thing here is in the, the top 30 numbers, there's seven hundredths of a second difference between the top 30 times. So multiply that by 45 laps is what we normally run in a race. Um, that's three seconds, three plus seconds. 
so not insignificant by uh, anybody's standards. Uh, okay, that's all I wanted to say about that. So, uh, save it. Um, so when I came back, I thought, well, I should really try and see what the problem was. So if we look at the roll center position for the rear on the high roll center car or setup, uh, you can see it's very close to ground. And what that does, uh, when we look at the chassis rolling, it uh, means the roll center moves around a lot. So I'm just going to animate this. What this animation does is it just rolls the chassis uh, around the roll center position or the roll axis, uh, which is the line connecting the front and the rear roll center. Uh, so I'm just going to animate this, and you can see the rear roll center just disappears off the screen, and it actually ends up outside of the uh, um, track width of the car. So if we go back and we look at the low roll center version, and animate that one over here, and now you see very little movement. So this one's nice and stable. The other one, not so much. So I think I probably just went a little bit over the top. I always try and, when I'm doing comparisons like this, I always take the approach of uh, go big or go home. Uh, so I think I may have gone a little too big on this one. But anyways, I certainly learned something. So, you know, if I was to go out tomorrow, what I would probably do <coughs> is go with something a little different. I wouldn't go quite as high on the front. I would certainly go less on the rear and I would probably do some camber adjustments. So let me just uh, do a comparison with the high roll center version. So you can see here roll centers are lower. <coughs> rear particularly is lower which is good. Um, it's going to make it nice and stable. Everything else is pretty much the same. We still have uh, a uh, lower roll sensitivity, so the car will be more responsive. Uh, the uh, camber gain numbers are down <coughs> quite a bit, so we shouldn't have uh, you know problems that could be created by uh, having too much camber in the car. So that's it. I uh, thought this might be interesting to you guys, and uh, hopefully uh, you will find it. If there's something that you'd like to look at or try and understand more, just shoot me a message and I'll see what I can do. That's it.